This is Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. All right, so let's jump in. Story number one is NBA news. The way that this works, look, we're, we're recapping basically what happened over the July 4th week, which you would think would not be a lot of news, but it, it's just a lot of tidbits, right? There's just not a whole lot of, like, deep stuff to dig into, right? Depends on how big of a hater you are. If, 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 if news number one is a big <laughs> deal or not. If you want to hate, then you can hate. Yeah. Uh, number one on this, we got DeMarcus Cousins to the Warriors. Uh, the question there is, is, is the NBA broken? Like, it, it, the first reaction was, holy crap, this isn't fair. Everything's wrong about this. They got five all-stars, five all-pros, five all-NBA guys. But if you really look at it, here's my side of it. One, DeMarcus Cousins, we don't know what his Achilles injury really is. He may not actually come back from this thing. Two, he wasn't getting a whole lot of offers, according to him and his agent. And and we can we dive can, into that. Yeah, finish, it, it's not like you he, got, and then it's I got not, an opinion on it's that. It's not like he gave... Go ahead. It's no, not, finish no, this, no, no. Keep, keep I'm, saying, I'm saying it's not like he gave teams a whole keep, lot of time. Keep, just keep going. Keep right? going. I, he, I'll take that side. No, I'm no, I'm going on your side. I'll take that this. side. I'm saying he didn't exactly give people a lot of time to like give him phone calls. I don't, I don't need you to make the argument. I got it. Okay. Either way... We don't know what his, his injury situation is going to be like. And if he wasn't getting a lot of calls and whatnot, and he just wants to go get a championship and kind of prove himself, then it makes perfect sense for him and the Warriors, right? I, I like that you said he's just going to go get a championship and prove himself. I don't know what he's proven to who. Well, no, I, just it, he proves himself and, enough uh, at the end of the season to go get another monster contract. So, like the, the Warriors don't need him. And that helps him out as far as I don't have to rush back. I'm not going to be pressured by a front office. The like, reason why your your initial question is, is the NBA broken? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and the reason why is because, well, the one team that didn't need him, and it's fine if he sits all season and doesn't come back until the end of the year, is because they don't need him to win anyway. But once he gets on the floor and he's healthy – then and there's no mathematical reason why somebody can't come back from an Achilles injury in a year and a half. Like we're not asking him to come back fast. We're talking he needs to be ready by well, no, May, when, no, no, April. No. When, when did he? Oh, he got hurt way early last year. I well, mean, no, it, it was, was it was he played like fifty something games, like fifty six games. I so think it, it was before the end of the year, before like the end of the year in two thousand seventeen. I don't think. No, no, no. It, he played. Calendar. He played like fifty six games last season, which means he played into February, March, anyway. something like that. So he he had to play like quite a bit to the, get the those fact, numbers. The fact that people are making the excuse that well he's not going to play a lot, so he's not going to be that big of a factor is ridiculous. When he plays, when he's healthy and on the court, it's just obscene the amount of talent that you can have on one team, all because these guys have no competitive bone in their body. They just want the easiest route to whatever the the end game is. And and that's fine if you want to live life that way. I I just don't find that to be a redeeming quality in somebody at all. And I, I can understand that. And the other that. thing is, is you're absolutely right about he. Well, all the people out there, just shut up. Oh, nobody else made him an offer. He signed in day two of free agency. Exactly. You mean I can't figure out like a game plan of what we're gonna do with a guy that's coming off an Achilles injury? We can't take a couple of days. To figure out, do we want this guy? Do we not? How much do we offer him? All of that stuff. Don't give me that nobody made him an offer or the Lakers passed on him or this team passed on him. They passed on him. They gave, they took he a gave him a day. Yeah. <laughs> one day. We, and we all knew the LeBron James egg was going to drop first. Yeah. After LeBron, less than 24 hours, he signs with the Warriors. Yeah, it was it was the next morning because LeBron was what like five o'clock on a Sunday or, they, yeah, or while six we, no, on a Sunday it was while we were recording, which was like I think six on that Sunday. I think we were finishing up. I mean, it was later than that. Oh, it we might have been later, but we weren't checking our phones while we were recording. So I don't either know, way, exactly five five when. or six o'clock central on Sunday night, somewhere around there. And by Monday morning, Monday morning it was Demarcus Cousins with the Warriors. Which is, I mean, it's bonkers. less than twelve hours goes by, and he's got a he's got a gig, but but nobody else made him an offer though, Gary. 
<laughs> Don't give the, me that. The Shut other up. side of this, like, not even talking about the Demarcus Cousins aspect, but like, if you look at how they built the team. Like they built it the right way. I don't have a problem with how they I, like it's the, not the an Kevin Durant thing. Problem. The Kevin Durant thing was jacked up from the That's beginning. It. It's but not like an organizational drafting, problem. They drafted Steph they, Curry, drafted yes. Draymond Green, drafted Klay Thompson, and then I don't like the idea that Kevin Durant was one bad quarter away from beating Golden State to make it to the NBA championships round to the NBA yeah. Finals, and he said, "Well, I lost." I'm just going to go play with the team that beat me last year. Yeah. It's not like they got smoked in that game. It's not like that they got blown out or swept. They were to game seven of the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. He yeah. gave them all they wanted. And there's no, hey, let's get them next year. Let's try this again. Let's And, and if you don't want to play with Westbrook, I, I, I get that. I'm not faulting somebody for not wanting to play with a guy like Westbrook. He's probably a really difficult dude to team up with. But – you just there's just something about it that this is supposed to be sports. This is not life, and everybody wants to equate it to like their bullcrap job. And well, if I got a better job offer, I'd take it. Shut up! You shut like up. Like this too. is not Put the same. Put you in a corner. Okay. Your, your better job offer was these, actually with Oklahoma City because they could pay more money. These jobs are, are are what they are. We love sports because of competition. Because one man trying to beat another one, outbest them, outwork them, out hustle them in every way, shape, form, or fashion. Not well, I couldn't beat them, so let me just go join them. Yeah, that's a little. It's just a little jacked it's just up to sorry. me. Sorry. Uh, as far as other NBA news, Carmelo Anthony was released by the Thunder. Is this it for Melo? I mean, it, it, is he still viewed as an All Star? You think? I mean, there are people out there that still see him as an All Star. Those people, they're wrong. That's I. I'm they're wrong. I have thought he was not very good for the last. I wish several I years. I wish he would sign with Golden State. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Because he would just be an anchor. He'd kill him. Yeah, that he's, team, he's a black when, hole. He yeah, has when been he for go, years. when he goes on the court, that would be the opportunity for other other people to just just take an advantage. Is there a fit for him in the NBA? I, I can't see it. I've heard the NBA guys I like to listen to, Bill Simmons and his crew. They're really really smart. And, and a lot of those guys are talking – this might be where they're talking. They think he's going to land, not he's a good fit for, but like Philly or Houston. Man, if I'm Philly or Houston, I don't want any part of him. No, I, I'm with you. I, now, how about this? I'll ask you this directly. What about the Grizzlies? No. The Grizzlies need scoring. I don't care. They need a, a starter that can actually put the ball in the bucket. No. It, isn't, that, isn't that why we paid Chandler Parsons a max contract? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. We already got one guy that's overpaid and can't do the job. I don't need two. All right, now tell me this. What did you think about the Grizzlies signing Kyle Anderson from the Spurs? I like the signing. I, I, it's so hard to get optimistic about anything with the Grizzlies. I feel more confident about the Browns than I do being a Grizz fan. Yeah, as how long insane as, is that, As right? long as Chris Wallace is in the chair – I don't want any part of it, and I. I want to know whose idea this was because it. I, I love the. I, 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 I love, love the signing. No, I love Look, the signing. Four years. I'm just trying to not give him any credit. Four years, thirty-seven million dollar contract. Andy Bailey, NBA writer for Bleacher Report, uh, tweeted Friday night once this went down uh, that nobody in NBA history matches Kyle Anderson's combination of assist percentage, steal percentage, rebound percentage, block percentage. The names in the conversation. As far as efficiency goes, like we were just talking about, Chris Webber, Josh Smith, Paul Millsap, Andre Karolinko, DeMarcus Cousins, Draymond Green, Oliver Miller, Ben Simmons, and Jordan Bell. That's pretty good company. It's that's, and he ranks better than all of them as yeah. far as percentage goes. I, no, I like now, he this. ain't a scorer. No, no, like, but but I, but he's efficient. I, I loved Memphis when we when we were that defensive juggernaut that everybody hated to play. This guy is a glue guy. He yeah. he played the third most minutes for the Spurs last year. Like, he is... Spurs are going in tank mode. You think that's what they're doing? How do they let him go? How do they let him get going? Well, I think because somebody like him, maybe you don't pay the full mid-level, which averages out to $9 million a year. Yeah, maybe. Um, the Grizzlies can afford it because, I mean, by God, we, you, we, you have to overpay. We piss money away on dumber stuff. Yeah. Uh, so this, this is probably one of the better contracts we own right, right now. This is, this is a perfect glue guy for 
somebody like one Jaron Jackson, who we just brought in, and then Mike and Mark, right? Mike Conley, Mark Gasol, they need a guy like this, and you need some more defensive presence. You need some guys that are that are glue guys, roll guys that will pass the ball, that make plays on defense. We don't have a lot of them right I, now. I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I just have I have so little hope. I can understand that. For this team to even be remotely enjoyable or bearable to watch. Well, let's let's go on a move from that into... I know that into, that's me being that, the downer. This is... We'll, we'll stay on the downer side. Okay. <laughs> All right. That? Now you're going to we'll really We'll stay on the downer side. All right. Tyreek Evans signed me. with the Indiana Pacers. One year, $12 million. Do the Grizzlies get a pass no. for screwing this up? No. If you... We didn't even make him an offer. We had... Trade offers at the deadline last year for real, valuable, legit assets. And we said no. If you say no to trading him, you have to at least extend him an offer to where you say, we didn't want to trade him, which is why we made him the offer. And he just said no to us. We didn't pick up the phone and call him at all. Let's let's Had play. we traded him, we even get a better opportunity at a better draft pick because we're in a better situation. Let's let's let me play devil's advocate. All right. I'll look at it from the other side. The other side is between the trade deadline, which is in February, and the end of the season, they at some point decided they did not want him. Now Monday but, but Monday hell, morning you can't de- you can't decide after the trade deadline I don't want him. That's that's your fault as a general manager. That well, is it, our problem. Well, but the, I think one of the reasons could be because Marshawn Brooks came on so strong, and they got him for dirt cheap out of the Chinese you, league. You cannot, you cannot tell me. Well, the week after the trade deadline, we realized we really didn't want him. Like that's a I'm mistake. Like that's your fault. You should be judged for that, and that judgment is termination of employment. I think I I think I agree with you. I was I was trying to play devil's advocate. I get it, but you I, I understand where they were coming from because you got Marshawn Brooks who was averaging like, what nope. I mean twenty some odd points Dominant a game. Rough. I hope like, he can be that yeah. forever. And, and you got him I, on a two year deal now for, for six hundred thousand dollars a year. You don't have to pay your full mid level to Tyreek. Like you can go get your glue guy That's and right. all that. Like you're you're no. fine. And then you still got your your sixth man score, right? But if you think there's any way on earth you're not if if you're so in love with him that you know you're going to make him a contract offer he's not going to say no to, then you don't pass on him now because well we don't have to make him the the mid level uh, whatever like that's just wrong. I think they just misplayed their hand. They thought he was more valuable than he was. Nobody gave him a steal of an offer, but they all had legit, real trade offers. If you could get offers. two second-round picks, I mean, my God, they got Dylan Brooks in the second round last I year. Just, I just don't understand it. I'm with just, you. I have no hope. <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel better about Cleveland than I do about the Grizzlies right it's, now. It's pretty sad. Now, that's sad. bad. Yeah, but, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've been wrong before. They, they got some good pieces right now. I like Javon Carter. I like uh, Kyle Anderson. Triple J I, is looking good. I like Marshawn in, Brooks. I like uh, I like Jaron Jackson. Yeah, I mean, I, look, the second squad looks pretty good right now. Like, I, I'm curious who they're going to cut because they've got 16 guys signed. You gotta you gotta get rid of somebody. We got plenty of guys that that it's fine if we cut them. Oh, like, I, I agree. Not one person that the Grizzlies cut will come back. I, and I bite think them. they will. That's I, not, that be true. I think they'll make some we, deals. We might actually be the one team to say we're going to cut this guy and he's an All Star next year. Oh, yeah. I mean, my God, we got rid of Kyle Lowry. He's an all-star. Just we got rid of just, Damari Carroll. We got rid of, uh, we, we got rid of uh, Grievous Vasquez was actually good when he left. Cannot make a good decision. That's just kind don't of what trust it seems it. like. I don't trust it at all. As much as I like the signing, I love the signing, but I'm just trying to I'm – tr- I'm not allowing myself to enjoy it. All right, let's move on to story number two.